Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your boy, it's your boy. It's Harold Dillon Jr., internet guy from Investment Group Partners. It is another Thanksgiving Thursday. We're in day 238. Day 238 of Christian financial wellness, that's the lesson. Day 238 are the days that we count as God gives them to us concerning a lesson. What's the lesson? It's a rhema word that God gives us every day, something that we can use, something that we can understand, something we can implement that we may experience victory on today. Every day there's a battle. Every day you're going to have to fight. Every day, but you have to know this. So don't get lazy. Don't get comfortable. You have to learn how to operate and function inside of God's perfect will daily. He woke you up this morning to do what? finish the work. Hey guys, this is Harold Elam Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. I'm super excited, man, because this is the last month of the third quarter. The third quarter has been great to us. You're talking July and August. Boom, great months. And if you look behind me, you're going to see news. We've got a lot to talk about in a short time to do it in. Once a week, we broadcast live from my personal page. I have two profiles on Facebook, so if you're following me, if you want to friend me, Look me up. There's only two. Both of them have over 4,000 friends. If you see anything else, it ain't me. Hallelujah. It ain't me. So please watch out what you're doing. Look, quick reminder, guys, if you're not using a two-step verification on Meta, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, Facebook is the, the parent company is Meta. Meta's overseeing Facebook. Meta oversees WhatsApp. Meta oversees uh, Instagram. This is, they even got a new thing like Twitter, Thread. So that's Meta. Meta is the parent company. That's what we invest in. Anything that we use, talk about investment group partners, anything we put money in, in. Anything that we purchase, we do our best to have an investment, a stock investment in that particular company. Hey guys, Mike, again, this is Thanksgiving Thursday. I'm super excited. There's a lot of things in the news that we're going to be going over today. We got a short time to do it in. This is opening bell. If you've never joined us before, this is a once a week uh, episode where we broadcast live from our personal page. Again, I have two personal pages to help encourage and invite more people to get a greater awareness of what's going on inside of our world. Investment Group Partners is the uh, parent association for Community Investment Club, also found on Facebook. So when you look up Community Investment Club, go to your top right hand corner, is that your left? <laughs> your left hand corner and type in community investment club there you will find our club join the club it's free doesn't cost you anything to join the club we have three three levels of membership inside community investment club first level of membership Learn as you earn member. That's a, a baby member. That's somebody want to learn as they earn. We teach you how to open up a brokerage account. We think everybody should have a full service brokerage account. Uh, full service would mean Fidelity, E-Trade, uh, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, um, Robin Hood. These are all full service brokerage accounts. It's something we suggest every family. We believe in learning how to do Christian financial wellness. You should have a full service brokerage account. We recommend uh, the six that we know of full service. Again, they're Fidelity, E-Trade, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Instant Act. Uh, interactive brokers and Robinhood. Those are full service brokerage accounts. These are accounts you can get somebody on the phone, have to talk to them, and you can go and talk to them. Now, Investment Group Partners, as the parent association for Community Investment Club, we oversee the club, a plethora of, of platforms, but the platform we're talking about today is Community Investment Club. Look us up on Facebook. I'm live from my page today, and you know me, hated my family in North Carolina, hated my family in Philadelphia, hated my family in Georgia, Ohio, uh, Michigan, Elam's all over the place. I hated my mom's side of the family. That's the Hollands right there, the Hollands and the Browns. So I hated y'all too. Elam's is my daddy last name. So that's why I got the last name, just so you guys didn't know. <laughs> but today we want to talk about uh, the third quarter. We want to talk about the at the end of every quarter, for people that don't know, if you've joined Community Investment Club as a, as a Learn As You Earn member, because we have three levels of membership, that's what I was talking about. First level is Learn As You Earn member. Here's a guy, here's a gal that opens up a brokerage account and they want to learn how to earn. Before you learn how to earn, we teach you how to navigate. Navigate through something so you get a better understanding. Same way when you join the church, same premises, you need to get a Bible. And you need to start coming to Bible study so you can learn. You can learn you can learn how to navigate through the word of God and use it to your advantage. Same way with a brokerage account. We want you to learn how to navigate through, not necessarily start trading, not necessarily start investing. We want you to learn how to navigate through, learn the verbiage.
knowledge. Learn how to look up, look at a chart. Learn what, what you're looking at when you look at the chart. And a lot of times people make it, make it seem like it's complicated when it comes to trading. No. No, God gives us a simple premises on how to be a better steward of his time, how to be a better steward of his money, how to be a better steward of his word. And so we implement biblically based principles on stewardship, even in navigation. The second level membership is a uh, self-investing member. Those are members that already know what they're doing. Those are members that's been investing in crypto, Forex, stocks, whatever you choose to do. Uh, we don't directly do crypto. We don't directly do Forex. We don't uh, directly do anything else but straight stock pickers. That's what we are. We are stock pickers. We have a strategy that's based uh, based on scripture out of the Bible, and it allows us to straight pick. So I have tunnel vision when it comes to picking stocks. And so we choose information. Uh, we choose stocks based off of information that we gather during the course of the day, during the course of the hour, during the course of the week. We believe in, in real-time, verifiable um Information, accurate information. This is the reason why you'll see on the television, you'll see CNBC. We found them to be reputable, real-time, accurate information. This is why you'll see Bloomberg on sometimes. Glory be unto your name, God. You'll see uh, CNN, Fox News, and we listen to several different outlets for information. We also read. See, here's where God gives us an opportunity to be better. He teaches us characteristic traits that we're already supposed to be having, and these characteristic traits should be implemented into our daily activities. So when God tells you in all of your getting, get an understanding, which means that if you're if you're going to school, you got to get an understanding. You got to gather information. You got to study for your test. That's the characteristic trait. And when you're studying, 2 Timothy 2.15, you're showing yourself approved unto God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman in need of not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When I pick up my word, and I began to study, it's given me a trait. It's creating a habit for me to look. And it's given me a habit as I look to gather. And as I gather, it's given me a habit to understand. These same characteristic traits are implemented into our daily activities. We're not telling you that we're not telling you um, that your that habits are bad. We're telling you to change your habits. Habitually and naturally, we are habitual people. Just naturally, it, we, we have habits. And so God wants us to change our habits. And the habits that we change are going to be lean more towards him, his word, his ways, not our ways, his ways. You want to be successful in life. You want to be a successful dad. You got to change your habits. You want to be a successful teacher. You got to change your habits. You want to be a successful lawyer, preacher, evangelist. Change your habits. That's the first thing you have to do. Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. This is Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That, that's us changing our habits. And so what we teach inside of Community Investment Club, remember, that's the community. And inside of this community is nine different neighborhood managed group portfolios. These portfolios are investment tools. They're places or, or resources that we use as a group to invest in. Each one of our portfolios can have five to seven minimum stocks inside of there. Why five? Because five is the number of grace. Why seven? Because seven is God completes number. And when we look at the book of Ecclesiastics, we see that God is encouraging us to have seven or eight different streams of income. So inside of every one of our neighborhood managed group portfolios, that's the tool. So Community Investment Club is the area. That's the, that's the community. Inside the community are nine different neighborhoods. And I'm trying to give you an, a, a virtual picture. Look at my screen just cutting off. HB Smart. We're going to say no right now. Hey, guys, I'm live right now. This is Harold Little Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you, 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 and you. It is Thanksgiving Thursday. This is Opening Bell. We're coming live from my page. Live, live, live. And we do this once a week so that people, more people, can get a better understanding of what Community Investment Club is, what Christian financial wellness is. That's the teaching. What neighborhood managed group portfolios. What are they? That's the product. And then there's a process. 
process, the process of how we get into our neighborhoods. That's called group portfolio club investing. We want to teach you all of that. But first, we want to help you understand you got to change your mind. This is this is a faith based organization. Who is the organization? It's investment group partners. We are a Nevada perpetual association. We're recognized by the state of Nevada as an investment club. And as this club, we we're no, we do business as IGP, DBA, IGP. This club oversees a plethora of platforms or neighborhoods that are all over the Internet. We're in uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, TikTok, Facebook. Um, you name it, we're there. And if I don't name it, then we may not be there. <laughs> Um, but our goal is to help people better understand how to be managers as God would call you to be a steward, a called a righteous, uh, a called and chosen righteous managing steward of God. This particular steward lets you be a manager of God's time, a manager of God's money, a manager of God's word. And as you become a better manager, you can get to the end result expectations that God would have for you that we're called from. Everybody has access to Proverbs 13.22. Our ministry is called from Proverbs 13.22. A good man, a righteous man, an honorable man leaves an inheritance for his children's children and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Stored up for the just. That's the wealth of the wicked. And so we've chosen and through prayer and meditation to use the stock market. That's our choice. And we pray and we ask God the platform that we would use. Doesn't matter what platform you use to get to the end result expectation that God would have for you. Long as it's when the bounds are being legal from the from the law, that's important. That's imperative because God tells us that we have to obey, obey the laws of the land, even though everything that God does supersedes anything that man does. But when God calls you to something, he makes provisions so that you're not in trouble, so that you're you're not doing something outside of his will. He makes provision. He gives grace. He gives grace. He gave my wife grace to live with me. I'm, I can sometimes be the most uncomfortable person I know to live with because I'm constantly doing what God would ask me to do. I'm constantly looking and searching for God in everything that I do, everything that I touch. And when I don't understand, I have to stop. I have to pull back and I have to seek God's face for understanding. And that's a learning process. That is a learning process. And so, God, listen, when you're when you're moving and operating inside of God's will, you'll learn. That's the habitual part of us. You'll learn through studying. You'll learn through gathering what it is you're supposed to do and what word you can implement into the situation you may be in. Don't let the people, the places, the things, don't let the negative Nancy's and the Dalton Thomas's stop you from getting to the end result expectation that God would have for you. Good morning. Hallelujah. I hope that wasn't too long. But listen, three levels of membership. Investment group partners inside of Community Investment Club, which is on Facebook, offers uh, Learn As You Earn members. That's your baby member. Uh, Self-investing members. And we also offer active investing members. These three levels of membership allows you to join us, learn from us. We learn together. We earn together. We do a lot of things together because that's a form of fellowship for us. But the biggest thing we do is we're doing our best to get to the end result. Part three of Proverbs 13, 22. We're talking about building generational wealth based on biblical principles through the stock market. That's our platform. Doesn't matter if you decided to be a lawyer, you still need the biblical principles to get to the end result called from Proverbs 13, 22. Doesn't matter if you want to uh, have a brick and mortar business, a restaurant, or you want to have a clothing store, you still need to apply the principles of stewardship based on the Bible to get to the end result expectations of Proverbs 13, 22. It's the principles that we're teaching. Don't, don't listen, guys, I am not uh, a professional broker. No, what we've done is found a platform, a way to get to the end result expectations of what God would have for us. For the wealth of the wicked, here's what God says. The wealth of the wicked stored up for the just. I can't say that everybody in the stock market is wicked, but there's some things going on that ain't of God. And so God teaches us how to operate and function inside of a space we've never been in before. You've heard me teach this and talk about this before. When you get inside of a space, it's called a position of purpose. When God puts you in a position of purpose or he shows you a revelation, there's a preparation period. With every revelation comes preparation. It, 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 one cannot come without the other. So this is how we know that God is talking to us. And once God puts you... Put you in a, in a position of purpose, that preparation period must go forth. 
You must go forth. You're in a place you've never been before. You've got to learn. You've got to understand. You've got to implement. These are places in your life where you've got to get better. You've got to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. How do we do this? We begin to study God's word based on why he called me. If he puts you in a place and you've never been married before, you need to study what would a husband do. That's when you pull out the scripture and God will begin to reveal to you those scriptures is good for a husband. Oh, I just became a lawyer. Just passed the law, the law, the, uh, the bar exam. Hallelujah. Good for you. Not me. I'm using that as an example, but you just passed that. So now you have to study and ask God, what do I do? How do I move? Who do I talk to? These are all, these are all things that you have to implement in your life daily based on the word of God. And in order to do that, you have to have a scripture. This is why I tell you, if you're going to come to our lessons, if you've never been here before, I'm broadcasting live. This is a once a week thing for my personal page. And I get an opportunity to reach more people because the Bible teaches us at Investment Group Partners, we're supposed to reach one, teach one, and bring one along. That's our mission. That's our mission is to help bring you into the fold, help bring you to the level of where we are so that you can get to the financial end result of for your family's future. See, my job as an individual preacher is to teach you how to establish, manage and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. And it's easy to do because you're already doing it. You already have the resources. You're already putting out the funds. You just didn't know it. And God teaches stewardship. So my God, my job is to reveal that to you. It's to reveal that to you, how simple it is. And God said, when you're applying this lesson, Harold, when you're teaching this lesson, when you're talking to my people, thus saith the Lord, give them the kiss rule. Keep it simple, saints. Because this is an opportunity for you to do better for your family, do better for yourself. You can break the mold of poverty. You can break that mentality. That's why we went to Romans 12 and 2, because the pattern of this world will show you how to go one way to achieve success. And that's not the way God would have you to go. And the way that God would have you to go will seem peculiar to certain people. It'll seem strange. It'll be uncomfortable for you. But we know. So when I go to Romans 8.28, doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it feels like. You know, if it's God telling you to do something, the Bible says, and we know in Romans 8, 28, all things God works for the good of those who love him. Read from the NIV version who have been called according to his purpose for those God foreknew. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So Romans 8, 28, 8, 29 lets us know that this doesn't happen. This ain't a happy chance. Nothing happens by chance. Everything works together for God's good. It may not look good to you. It may not feel good to you. It may not taste good to you. But you know if you're walking inside of God's will, you're in his position of purpose. Guess what? It's working out for your good. It's working out for your good. And so when we begin teaching, what's the teaching? It's Christian financial wellness. That's the teaching. What's the community? The community is Community Investment Club. That's where you join. That's where you invite your friends. At. Hey, guys, come on. Join Community Investment Club. There's a brother up there named Harold Elam, and he's teaching stewardship principles, the principles of stewardship, how to be a better manager, how to be a better manager. You see behind me, you see charts and numbers. That's me gathering information. That's me gathering information so we can make the right decisions on where to go, what to do, based on a strategy. Listen, here's part of our strategy. It comes from Ecclesiastics 11, because God wants us to have, uh, he's encouraging us to have uh, seven or eight different streams of income. And so he led me to Ecclesiastics 11, 1 and 2. You need to read 11, 1 through 6 to get an understanding, 11, 1 and 2. But before you go to Ecclesiastics 11, 1 and 2, you need to get an understanding of, of Proverbs 13, 22. You had to understand that generational wealth. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. That's what we're at. We're in part three of Proverbs 13, 22. We're already in, in, in motion. We're already on assignment. We're already searching out that end result expectation. How do I get the wealth, God? How do I get what's stored up for me? And so in Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, because we chose the stock market, God says seven or eight streams of income because you need to be in a place, in a position of purpose where you can handle things for your family, handle things for the future, handle things for your grandkids, because that's what the future is all about. Generational wealth is a, is a generation that skips your children, goes to your grandchildren. Because we're not doing this. I'm not doing this for Joshua, Sade, Sean and, and, and um, Isaiah and Tion. Those are my kids. 
or my children, I don't know if kids or billy goats, my children, I'm doing it for their children. Now they get a chance to eat or they get a chance to experience and be gifted from, from the works of our labor, but it's for their children. And remember, things that we do be, uh, creates learned behavior for our children, whether they're grown or not. So now they're learning how to do it for their grandchildren. See the legacy? And then their, their kids are learning from them how to do it for their grandchildren. And it must keep going and going and going and going. Generations after you're long gone, after God has called you home. That's the thing about generational wealth. When you invest in something, it's more than just a life insurance policy. It's got to be something that's ongoing, even though you're no longer here. That's why it's businesses. It's land. It's property. This is something that has to be continuous because the God we serve is an ongoing God. He don't stop. <laughs> anyway, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2 says, ship your grain across the sea. I'm reading from the NIV version. Grain was a commodity. Then grain is a commodity. Now ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you might receive a return. That commodity has an opportunity to get lost. That, that, that grain has an opportunity not to give you a return. And God tells you, ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you might receive a return. Invest in seven ventures. Yes. And eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So he's telling us invest in seven or eight different. That's what we, we encourage right there. Seven or eight different ventures. One, one, one um, translation reads seven or eight different people. Even if you invest in people, it's still an investment. The Bible teaches us that Jesus healed ten lepers. Because he's expecting a return. And only one came back. And he asked, didn't I heal ten or nine others? And I'm paraphrasing. Because every once in a while, God will bless us, but we don't give him a return. We don't give him joy. We don't give him thanks. We don't give him gratitude. He woke you up this morning. You should be losing your everlasting mind because he gave you a chance to finish the work. Hallelujah. He gave you a chance to finish the work. You should be happy and excited about doing what God would have you to do. Why are you complaining? Why are you in a pessimistic mode? Why? You're in your right mind, able to put on your clothes. Now understand what the mothers of the church would say when they would get up and testify and say, I thank God for waking me up. I thank God for, for putting me in my right mind, allowing me the use of my limbs because this, oops, lost my head. <laughs> this is our opportunity to finish the work. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Guys, listen, this is Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy. If you've never joined us before, again, we broadcast once a week, once a week from my live, from my personal page that we may reach more people. This is an awareness ministry on Christian financial wellness. We teach you how to be better managers of God's money, God's time, and God's word. We use the stock market as a resource, as a point of view for getting a return and investing money. Listen, guys, what we've done over the last three years has been phenomenal. Phenomenal, but it's all through Jesus Christ. We didn't do this on our own. This is God growing us together. We use a process called Group Portfolio Club Investing. That's the actual process. We pull our funds together and we invest together. That gives us a greater buying power to buy more stocks. We use the, the stock market. We don't do Forex. We don't do the cryptocurrency directly. Uh, we don't do, um, what's the other thing? I don't even know. But we don't do the puts and the calls, not directly. We are individual stock pickers, so we look at the information that's available to us. We make sure that that information is verifiable. We make sure that information is real time, and then we make a decision based on the information we've gathered. Same principles that God would have us to do in life. Before you do anything, get an understanding. God says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge, which means that we're too lazy to go obtain the knowledge we need to get to point A or point B. Men especially, you know we don't want to follow directions. We don't want to look at the map. We just want to drive. We just want to go where we think we know we're going. And the Bible tells us there's a way by man that seems right. And I had to learn that because of pride. You got to get rid of the pride. I'm talking mostly to the male gender. Because we don't want to read. We don't want to do this. We don't want to go to the doctor. Because we think we know what's best. But the Bible says there's a way by man that seems right, and that way leads to death. Stop getting in your own way. 
Stop, get out of your own mind and let God begin to use you based on the word of God. And his word is simple. It's not hard. This isn't complicated. You let the world tell you it's hard. So listen, let's get into the market, guys. Listen, I've been with you guys, I guess, for about 20 minutes. We like to do 30 minutes or less now. Uh, we, we try, our, we, we do our best. We're not going to use try. <coughs> Excuse me, we do our best not to have an hour-long podcast. We want to come throughout the day, and we want to update you. This is Opening Bell with Harold Dillon Jr., the Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. If you're just now joining us, we're the Parent Association for Community Investment Club. Today, I'm broadcasting live from my page, and I'm inviting you, 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 and you to join us. Join us online. We're on Meta. If you're watching me right now live on Facebook, go to your top left-hand corner of your page and type in... Community Investment Club. When you type in Community Investment Club, the group will come up. It's a private group. Join the club. doesn't cost you anything to join. You ain't got to download no videos. You ain't got to buy no books. I ain't selling Bibles. No. All I want you to do is join the club and follow us and see what you've learned. Ask questions. Engage. Talk with the other people that are in the neighborhood. We have a little over 1,500 members in Community Investment Club. Your opportunity to fellowship and engage with people that want to do like you do. Want to get to the end result. Expectations of Proverbs 13.22. This is all about generational wealth. This ain't about Harold. This, is, this ain't about Julius. This ain't about John and Mary and Susan, this is about us doing something together that God has already placed in our hearts. Not everybody going to receive the call. Not everybody's going to finish the work. Not everybody's going to be wealthy, but God said there has to be an example. There's a remnant of us. That mean, remnant means a small number of us that's going to do what the, what, the, what the body of Christ needs. We're going to perform the end result expectation that's called from Proverbs 13, 22. This is why God said you're called, chosen, righteous, managing stewards of God. You're a steward. You're a steward. When you go to Matthew, 25. Get a chance. I want you to read that. Matthew, 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 Matthew 25 and 14 and start reading and get a better understanding of what God is saying when he's saying, listen, I'm going to entrust something to you, but I'm looking for a return. I'm going to entrust something to you, whether it's time, whether it's money, whether it's my word, and I need a return. What's happening is we've been fooled by the enemy. You've been duped that the enemy has convinced you that you're an owner. <laughs> That you're an owner and really you're a manager of what God has already entrusted to you. When you read in Matthew, and I'm going to just read a little bit, Matthew 25 and 14, NIV version. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. God did it. To one, he gave five bags of gold. God did it. To another, two bags of gold. God did it. To another, one bag of gold, according to his ability. God gives you something according to your ability. So he placed these men in a position of purpose. And inside of that position of purpose, they had to deal with what God had given them. He didn't tell them to leave. He didn't tell him. He said, I'm going away on the journey. I need you to deal with what I gave you right there. I gave you a wife. Deal with that. I gave you children. Deal with that. I gave you that job. Deal with that. I gave you that car. Deal with that. Show me that you can grow what you have right there. Goes on to say, then he went on his journey. So the man left. He left. Left. Gone. Bye. Gone. Bye. Bye. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. That's the return. He gave five more bags. Guys, listen, I'm logged in this morning. And listen, we're going to be trading throughout the day. I'm going to be coming back uh, throughout the day today. But we're going to be going to our page, not my personal page. Or should I stay on the personal page all day? I don't know. I got to pray about it because the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Verse 34 says, Take no need for tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. There's enough evil in today. So we learn how to deal with today. When you're reading that parable, this man went out and we're talking about the 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 the, um, the, the master or the, the, um, the, 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 the man who went on his journey and entrusted his wealth to them. This is a parable about Jesus and how Jesus is leaving stuff to us. He's leaving uh, his word to us. He's leaving the works to us. He's leaving the ministry to us. And we're supposed to be examples of light on the earth. We're supposed to be operating, moving and functioning like him. This ain't a familiarity. This is us operating like him. We're servants of the Lord. We're ambassadors of Christ. And so I'm supposed to look, act just like him. He even said in his word, and I don't have the scripture offhand, but it says greater works is these. I leave to them. They'll do greater work. 
than I did. This is Christ talking to us. Because he knew that times would change. He knew they go from donkeys to cars, to televisions, to phones, to planes that fly in the air. So the technology is there. He said, greater works they'll do. He'll know that there are mega ministries where now you can get on the internet like we're on right now. Speak to millions upon billions of people. That you got an opportunity to save billions of lives. But it has to be real. Cannot be a hireling. It's got to be a calling. And that's the beauty of what God is saying. So every one of us within the body of Christ has a calling. You have to operate inside of your calling. That's your position of purpose. That's your position of purpose. And I'm only here to tell you that you need to operate and grow inside of that position. It says the man who had received five bags of gold went out at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. Are you putting to work what God has given you today? <laughs> that's the question. Are you putting to work? I don't care if it's the time. What you going to do with that 24 hours you got? What you going to do with the word God has given you this morning? No more excuses. That's the rainbow word for today. The There's a book Tony Robbins wrote, and we're reading it. And I, 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 it's called um, Tony Robbins, No More Excuses. Be the man that God made you to be. Great book. Great book has a lesson in everything. And maybe we'll use this book as an opportunity to learn even more. But it's geared towards men, the, the male species, because so many of us, because we're supposed to be the head of the house, so many of us are no longer the head. We've been decapitated. Or we let us get inside of our head. But today's word, honestly, today's word, I'm going to go to the word, today's word, so you can understand and give you a scripture. Then I got to go. Listen, this is Harold Dillard Jr., the Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. It is day 238. Hopefully I said that. We have no more excuses. That's today's word. We have no more excuses. Thanksgiving Thursday, ready or not. And it goes on to say, we live in a world where everyone makes more or less excuses. However, in any case, your mind is thinking of making an excuse because you may not want to face the truth in all cases. So we make an excuse because we don't want to face the truth. My wife has even told me before, Harold, stop making excuses. Accept your failure. Accept your defeat. Accept your losses or that L. Accept your mistakes, your shortcomings, your, your inconsistencies. Accept that. Yup, that was me. I did it. My fault. My mistake. Lord, forgive me. Ask for mercy. Repent. I give you Proverbs 25 and 12. Don't excuse yourself by saying, look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you. He who guards your soul knows you knew. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. How you gonna say you didn't know? God know in your heart that you knew. We are without more excuses. The Bible says that we are without excuse in the book of Romans. But the title of the lesson is we have no more excuses. That's today's word. Glory be unto your name. Anyway, guys, a couple of key stocks to look at. I want y'all to know we're opening up. Listen, this is in the third quarter. If you are a member of Investment Group Partners, I cannot stay live today. We come back. We're going to come back on our page. You want to learn more? Go to Community Investment Club. Follow me there because we're going to be doing afternoon updates. The updates are going to give you things on the Philadelphia Project. Updates on the end of the third quarter. Statements come out between September 22nd and October 2nd. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, I'm going to give you another scripture. Proverbs 16, 2. We're talking about no, we, title of the lesson, we have no more excuses. We have no more excuses. If you didn't know, these lessons are published on my personal page, our group page, and then they're shared all over the Internet. The purpose of the Rhema Word is for us to share the word, for us to receive the word, share the word, and then for you to receive the word, understand the word, and then implement the word. That, that's easy. See, see how the system that God set up? I love God's strategy. His strategy is awesome. Um, uh, 16 and 2 God knows all men have sinned and fall short of his glory, but he is only interested in our repentance. That's change, overcoming and growth, not our excuses. Everyone is doing it does not justify our personal sin. God will forgive only as we repent. We have no more excuses. Don't let your age be an excuse. Don't let your color be an excuse. Don't let your gender be an excuse. Don't let your weight be an excuse. Don't let your height be an excuse. Don't let your knowledge be an excuse. Don't let your lack of be an excuse. Because if you truly believe in God, it doesn't matter. 
because you know that God can handle and do all things. Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No more excuses. There are no more excuses. We're going to do this thing. Let's do this thing. That's what we do. We're Community Investment Club, guys. The Parent Association is Investment Group Partners. That's where I'm CEO, co-founder of Investment Group Partners. We're a Nevada corporation recognized by the state of Nevada as a perpetual association. So we're here to help you become better stewards of God's time, God's money, and God's word. Let me teach you how to fish <laughs> so you can feed your family for a lifetime. That's the difference. Start following us. Start keeping up with us. Even if you don't join, follow the results. Don't follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. This is today's word. Let's go back. We have no more excuses. Hallelujah. Good morning.